All right, so let's discuss bean life cycle callbacks and how to use them in your programs. So back in IntelliJ, so sometimes there's a need to perform certain actions upon initialization and destruction of your beans. Now one way is to use XML and specify init and destroy methods inside the XML. And uh, when you write initialization and destroy method callbacks, you typically write methods with names such as init parentheses or initialize parentheses, dispose parentheses and so on. So ideally the name of the uh, lifecycle callback methods are standardized across a project so that all developers use the same method names and that ensures consistency in the project. But obviously in that scenario, you're relying on the programmers to keep up and uh, do things the same way. What you can also do is configure the Spring container to look for named initialization and destroy callback methods on every bean. So that means that you, as an application developer, can write your application classes and use an initialization callback called init parentheses without having to configure an init uh, method attribute with each bean definition. So in other words, the Spring container calls that method when the bean's created and also enforces a consistent naming convention for initialization and destroy method callbacks. So in our case for our project, in the game impl class, we're calling the reset method to initialize the class itself. I'm just going to bring that up on the screen. So we're obviously calling that method that we wrote, our reset method. If we have a look in main.java, you can see we've got a call there on line 35 to that. So at the moment we're initializing the class that way by calling that ourselves. But instead of calling it manually, we can actually configure the container to uh, call that method for us. So first let's remove this call to the reset that we're doing in main.java. So I'm going to delete these two lines and also delete the extra blank line there. So now the uh, method, the reset method won't be called, but we still want to call it after the bean's been initialized. So let's open our beans.xml file. And one way of doing it is to add an attribute to our beans definition called init method. So this attribute can be used to call any method that's used for initialization. In our case, it's going to be the, the uh, reset method. So let's try that approach first. So we're gonna come up here on the first line after class and put init method. And you can see that IntelliJ gives us uh, a shortcut there. And we're gonna type in reset, which is the name of our method. And now if we go back to our main.java and run this, And you can see this line here is telling us invoking init method reset on bean with name game. So that's one way of calling the initialization code once the bean's been initialized. But this way uh, is prone to errors because for every bean we've got, we've got to specify the init method in XML. And it's basically a different method for each bean that uh, we use. Now we can try and ensure consistency by always using a reset method, but basically it's up to us to get this configuration correct in the XML. In other words, for making sure that we always use reset and type it in there in that init method. So to ensure consistency, there's another way. We can add the default init method inside the, the uh, beans tag at the top of the, the uh, file. So we can also do it here. We're not gonna actually use this, but I just wanna show you that it does exist. So in here, we can also put default init method. We could do the same thing there, like that. And that would then ensure that for every bean that we've defined, it would automatically use that init method because we've defaulted that init method to reset. But again, we're not going to use that for now, so I'm going to de delete that and remove that. Now you can figure destroy method callbacks similarly, in XML that is, by using the default destroy method attribute at the top level. And I've just removed the default init method. So you can do something similar for the destroy method. But this can be very bad practice because it's very easy to get lost, especially if every bean has a different name for the init or destroy method. All right, but we don't want to do that here. So we're not going to be uh, configuring the default destroy method or the default init method in our bean uh, configuration at the top either, because there's an even better way than using XML. What we can do is use the JSR250 uh, post construct and pre destroy annotations, which are generally considered best practice for receiving lifecycle callbacks in a modern Spring application. So using these annotations means that your beans are not coupled to Spring specific interfaces, and it's a good thing. So let's go ahead and use that. And what we're gonna do is remove this init here for our game bean. We're not gonna be using that either. And obviously we've removed the uh, other temporary thing that I added here, the attribute for beans um, on the next line that I deleted for our beans definition at the top of the file. 
So to use these uh, annotations instead, we've got to register a bean with the common annotation bean post processor. Right, so how do we go about using these annotations? Well, to use the post construct annotation to call the reset method and get the spring container to do that for us, we just need to annotate it with the post construct annotation. So that's our reset method itself, which is in game impl. But to uh, do that first, we need to define a bean definition for the container to recognize the post construct annotation and the spring post construct annotations handled by the common annotation bean post processor class. So we'll start off by defining that bean on this line, on this uh, next line. So we're gonna come down here and we'll put bean, the bean tag and class equals org.springframework.context.annotation. And it's common annotation bean post process. You can see in terms of it was pretty helpful there, getting us to find that. So we need to define that. As you can see, I haven't defined an ID yet, bean ID. We just need the class attribute. That's enough to get it to work. Now that we've done that, we can add a dependency to the annotations uh, or for the annotations API so that we can use the post construct and pre-destroy annotations. So we're going to need the uh, parent pom file open. So I'm going to open that there and we're going to be adding another dependency. Now we need to know what version that we're going to be adding those. So the quickest way of doing this is to go to the MVM repository website mbn repository.com and what we're looking for is the javax.annotation so let's just type that in javax.annotation and I'm going to select the first option that's come back here and you can see it's 1.3.2 so I'm just going to select that and I'm just going to grab the dependencies obviously we could type this manually if you knew, knew the uh, settings but uh, in our case if we just copy that and I'm going to paste that in down here below the dependency, oh, that's a new dependency, I should say. I'm just going to make a note here that this is for the uh, annotation API. So we've got version 1.3.2 there, but we're not hard coding version numbers anymore. So I'm going to cut that out. That'll give us a temporary error. We need to come up here and we need to add a new property for our annotation. So annotation dash API dot version, I'm going to call it. And I'm going to paste in the version number there. And now if we go back down in version, we're going to put dollar sign, left and right curly braces, annotation, dash API dot version. Right, so that's our configuration at the parent POM level. Now since we've declared it in that uh, parent POM file, we also need to add this dependency to the core module. But if you call without the version number. So we're going to go back to our, this time, the POM file for our core project. And I'm going to come down here and paste that in as a dependency. And I've obviously copied the wrong thing, so I'll just go back to the other file again. And I'll just copy the entire dependency. We'll go back to our core, paste that in, but we're going to remove the version because the version is automatically found from the parent POM file. All right, so we've defined that now. All right, so at this point we can now use annotations, which will be coming from the annotations API dependency that we've just added. So let's go back to our game input class. I'm going to close down this window down the bottom to give us a bit more space. So at the moment we've got this reset method. So what we're going to do is move this, the uh, reset method above the uh, common public methods. And that's because it's going to be called in automatically by the spring container. So we want to make it obvious to ourselves that this is uh, initialized, it's an init method effectively. So I like putting those in a separate section. So I've just pasted that there and moved it up. So it's clearer to us. So what we now need is to add the uh, post construct annotation. I'm just going to go up here at post construct. At the moment, we've got a red arrow there, but I'll talk about that shortly. So in initialization methods, you can add initialization code that usually goes to constructors when you're not using the spring container. So our file is nicely structured where we've got our fields at the top. And after the fields, there's now init and public methods. It's always a good idea to add initialization code right after the fields. That way code is easy to follow and you don't have to scroll up and down the list to find your initialization code. All right, so at the moment we've added post construct annotation, but the annotations are still in red. In other words, IntelliJ is showing the compilation error here. Now this error will only occur with Java 9 and 10. And it's because the annotation is in the Java EE module and it will be removed in Java 11. So the workaround here, if you're running Java 9 or 10, is just to click on that line somewhere, or click into the post construct itself, 
until the red light bulb appears, and it was noticed that it had appeared before I started typing anyway. But once the red uh, light bulb has appeared, I can click on that. Notice that we've got a couple of options here. There's, there's one suggestion to add the Maven dependency, but of course we've just configured that dependency, so that's not going to help us here. So we want to click this first one, add, add modules to javax.ws.annotation to the module compiler options. So this again is just a workaround for Java 9 and 10. If you're using Java 8 or 11, you won't need to do this. Basically only do this if you see that the annotations are showing in red. So now that I click on that, notice now that uh, the error is gone and the annotation is no, no longer displayed in red, which is good. All right, so we're going to add another method after our reset method, which we're going to call or have Spring call for us before our bean gets destroyed. So to do that, I'm just going to create a method public void pre-destroy parentheses and open up the uh, left and right curly braces and we're just going to do a simple log here so log.info double quotes is going to be uh, in so in game pre-destroy just so we know that the pre-destroy method has been called and what we want to do is add an annotation to that so that it does get automatically called for us so at pre-destroy using the at pre-destroy annotation on the pre-destroy method that we've just written. So now that we've done that, if we go back to main and run that, we scroll up and have a bit of a look here. And in fact, it can often be faster to try and find it by using a control F or command F, depending on your operating system. Let's do a search now for common annotation. That's probably enough there. So. We just want to see the uses of our common annotation bean post processor, which is of course what we added uh, to our bean beans.xml file. So we scroll down and have a bit of a look here. These lines here are interesting. We found the init method on class, our game impl class, and it shows us the uh, method reset. It found the destroy method, which is our pre-destroy method there. And to register the init and destroy Basically registering those as init and destroy methods down here on uh, these two lines here. And then it's actually invoking it. You can see it's invoking the init method now. And again, it's the container doing all the hard work there for us. And if we go right down to the end, we can see that uh, we're invoking the destroy method as well. And we can see that uh, we've got the output from our log from our pre-destroy method. So we know that that code's being executed. So with the help of this logging, we can easily see what's happening now in the background when these beans are now created. So as a quick sum up now before we finish the video, best practice here is to use post-construct and pre-destroy methods instead of specifying them using XML. But in the next, in the next video, we're gonna talk about bean auto-scanning and auto-wiring, which is an important concept to understand. I'll see you in the next video.